How you doing? Hey, Adam, how are you? Uh, is the uh, video and sound okay? Everything sound all right? Okay. Um, <laughs> good morning, everyone. Hi, Bill. Hi, Javi. Thanks. Um, Tim, good morning. Okie doke. Um, what I uh, what I wanted to talk about today is is a little unusual in in some respects. Um, hi, Sergio. Um, in, in this in this regard, I when when I'm looking for a watch. I usually look for one thing primarily. And hey, Gilberto, good morning. How are things in the Philippines? Abdul, <laughs> hello. Um, hi, Clyde. The um, I I was looking at my collection, and I I realized there there's some watches. That I, I really enjoy wearing uh, the ones in, in there. They have kind of things. Uh, this one I like a lot. This is my FP Journal Chronomat Souverain. Very simple watch. Uh, same with my H Moser. Simple. The uh, Urban Jurgensen. Again, simple time only watch. Lang and Heim Frederick. Uh, the second, simple. Now, here's one that I got, and to tell you the truth, I didn't think I'd wear it a lot. This is, I mean, the name alone. Uh, this is my Chomet Artie Dandy open face. I love wearing this watch. There are so many reasons, one, not to get it, and two, not to wear it. <laughs> it was... I, I like the looks of it. To have it, it has a case of this is is just incredible. Um, but the reasons not to wear it is that it's very hard to wind, very hard to set. You can see right here. This is where the the uh, crown is up here, and it's under this little crown guard. Very hard to get at. Uh, and then when when you wind it, everything goes backwards, and so you have to sort of, you know, like hitting a moving target. But for some reason, I have more fun wearing this watch. Um, I, now, I got it because there were two uh, Aganor uh, Aganes uh, discs in it. And I really like the way the little Ferris wheel goes around. But I didn't think I was going to really wear it. I just thought, oh, I'll get it from my collection because it's sort of a cool thing. Uh, another watch that I enjoy wearing, and this is this is one that doesn't look very comfortable at all with the crown and um, the bow and crown and the bar lug at the bottom. Super comfortable, and I enjoy wearing it. Now, some other ones I don't dislike wearing. I just find myself not wearing them very much. And the the question, I guess, I wanted to ask you guys is when you go looking for a watch. What do you look for? Uh, and like I said, I, I look for primarily the movement and the watch, you know, who made the watch and uh, especially like it when there's sort of somebody uh, who not recognized. Maybe this is one of the reasons I like this so much. Uh, the, the fact that there's an Aganor uh, module, uh, you know, right at the top up here is, is one reason. But why is this so much fun to wear? When when the hands are over here, it's almost impossible to tell time. They have to hard to wind, hard to set, and patent leather, patent leather straps. I mean, like, come on, you know, people who wear patent leather straps and tuxedos are at parties. I don't get invited to. Nevertheless, I really like this watch. Um, so that's that's sort of like, what is it now? On the one hand. Um, and the watch set, uh, this Larique uh, Etude Number One, I love this watch. 
one of the things I found I like about it so much, one thing that's really surprised, it's so easy to wind. I don't know why. I just sit here and tickle the bottom of it, and it winds right up. And once it's fully wound, it it's it has it's sort of like a it it, it has a very similar I'll I'll say um, sort of attitude that uh, H Moser has. If H Moser has a watch that they say is uh, seven days, it'll be eight or nine days, like this one. This is a seven day, but uh, I can wear, you know, eight or nine days. And when I, w- when I interviewed um, Ed- Edward uh, Malin, he said, well, he said, yeah, he said, if it, it'll, it'll run like that, but, you know, we, if we're going to guarantee it for seven days, we want to be able to, to have it run for eight days. And he talked about these, you know, the strength of the spring and the consistency and so forth. The same thing here. Um, when uh, when I asked uh, the guys at the Aganor, I said, "Well, you know, how many hours?" And they said, 40 hours." Well, this one of our guys who got his, he said, "What are you talking about? This thing runs 60 hours uh, without even you know breathing hard." And <laughs> the thing was, it, perhaps it was breathing hard after 40 hours, because that I mean, it was sort of set. Well, after 40 hours. You're going to you can't have the accuracy that you can have at 40 hours, and so that's that was what that was what it uh, was set up for. But the big thing, the reason I like this, other than the the fact that it's super easy to wind, simple, easy to tell time, but if the observatory hands, uh, I also have it on Urban Jurgensen. The thing about observatory hands is that you have one hand with a big home at the end of it, a big uh, circle, and then the other one's straight like that. You can glance at it, and without even thinking, you can you can uh, distinguish between the hour hand and the um, and the minute hand. Something like this, it doesn't take a lot, I mean, because of the size differences, but that's just one thing that I happen to like, is that on the observatory hands, you can see at a glance uh, which is the hour hand or which is the minute hand. Okay. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Hey, Lee, John and JJ. Good to see you guys. Brendan. Hey, big Sal. How you doing? Attracted to interesting dials, good movement and watches that tend to be off the beaten path. Yeah. Big Sal. I, I have, those are, those are things I like too. You know, one thing I got this thing, and for one of the reasons I got it, um, is that it had a brown dial. I really had wanted a brown dial. I don't know why, but I thought, well, I got to have a brown dial. I have, uh, and this, like I said, I, I I have problems with black dials, uh, and I have some of my favorite watches have black dials, and simply because it's a little harder to read. Uh, for me, but this one's got a, this one makes it hard in a different way to read. And yet I like it a lot. And, I, and again, you know, these kinds of things, trying to figure out, well, what do we look for? Oh, let's see. Um, hi, William. Observatory hands are like me. At a glance, you know, I'm old. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I think like both of us. Hey, John, see the quality of movement, finish uh, finish of it, finish of it, huh? Oh, and finish of the, yeah, uh, the dial uh, has to have a, a little pop at least, okay. Um, Adam, I don't personally like big clunky watches, 43 to 44, 15 millimeter profile. Me neither. Uh, and and again, this is what's so funny about this thing. It's got a big drum-shaped uh, uh, case to it, uh, and it's got some depth. I don't mind wearing it. It's easy for me to wear, it. and I and I don't know why because I agree with you. I like I like nice thin watches. Um, where is it? There's another one I I really enjoy is a uh, um, Van Cleef and Arpels, uh, the one the um, 
uh, time here and time elsewhere. I love that watch. Uh, and very thin. It's almost like it's not there. You know, a funny thing, though, uh, I've got another watch I like to wear a lot, too. It's my uh, H. Moser uh, double hairpin. That's a big watch, big, heavy sucker, white gold, which adds a weight to it. I don't even know I'm wearing it. If that thing is so well balanced. Um, and this is, again, I look at this, I have no idea why this, this is another one of those ones. I think I wear it and don't even know what's on. Um, but anyway, what else do you like? Let me see. Um, I don't like, you don't like the big clunky ones yet. Generally, I don't either. I, I, I like, uh, I've got, a I got a couple big clunky ones and, uh, my uh, Easy Diver. I love that Easy Diver with the uh, Roger Debuy movement also on the, um, uh, it's, it's a version of the Sympathy uh, by Roger Debuy. It's a big clunk, I mean, really big clunky one. Great for going on walks with and gang fights, you know, or bar fights. <laughs> Bam. Hey, Andre, how you doing? Flipping Zippo, good to see you. I also like d dial color, uh, trying uh, to have as much different dial color as possible. Yeah, I like I like a variety of it. I, I you know, just in looking at my my watches, I, I sort of tend toward the 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 lighter colors, uh, sort of like this cream colored um, uh, Lang and Heim, and uh, I just. Yeah, it, it mainly because of the contrast. You get great contrast with that. The same on this one with with the lighter colors. However, uh, I like blue. I like this is my has a blue dial, and the my brown dial. I I, I like that one too. It, it's it's a funny kind of thing, and and I trying to figure out. <laughs> it was like, God, I have a, I have no standards, but they sort of come up and they say, Hey, you're fun to wear. You're fun to have on. I mean, if if you're in a jam time wise, you can always look at your uh, your phone. But for the most part, I, I use my watch. Just checking on a watch, and gee, some watches I look at it, and, and they're sort of maso menos. <laughs> Still, I like them. Hi, Benedict. Uh, I visited F. P. Jern in uh, Thailand. An incredible time. Uh, they were so nice. And my mother uh, got on the Elegance waiting list. Yeah, those things are really something. You know, the Elegance is one of the watches. I am not a fan of quartz watches. I mean, I don't hate quartz watches. It's just not what i sort of into collecting. But the Elegance is really an interesting one. Hi, Tuna. How you doing? Hi, Sergio. There are certain days I'm more interested in the dials uh, than in others about movement and finish. It varies, but also getting more interested in independence and things off the beaten path. Yeah, that that's another thing. I'm glad you brought that up because that's usually where I find my attractions too, is sort of something, you know, there's something that's, you know, off the beaten path, but not, not over in crazy land, okay? <laughs> crazy wheel. I don't care for um, skeletonized dials. They're just too hard to read. But, you know, the thing of it is, is that I think for all of us, is that I talk to a lot of people who say, oh, they really like skeletonized dials. And that's cool. They just like them. <laughs> you know, and I can see in terms of, you know, being able to see the movement. Uh, let's see, Bill, show, uh, when I look at a watch, I create a Venn diagram in my mind, uh, dial design, movement, elegant. Then I then the watch intersects at my three values. It's a keeper. I'm not sure if I could do a Venn diagram in my mind. I I think mine looks like a it's a logo a, a, a Lego collection that haven't been put together yet. Hi, Brendan. Uh, I just put a deposit on a Christopher Ward Bel Canto. Uh, motivated by finishing and uh, Son of Ray uh, out passage at that price. Yeah, that really is. I, For some reason, people say, well, that's not a minute repeater. 
I don't know why not. <laughs> that, that bel canto is that that watch is sort of like a, a in a way it's also like a mini uh, MBNF uh, that most of us can't afford. <laughs> but the bel canto that was a brilliant thing by uh, uh, Christopher Ward. Some about Christopher Ward. They've got a lot of watches that are really cool. Hey, Gilberto. I look for watches that can be worn in a variety of clothes, whether shirt and jeans. You know, that's a, yeah. You, some of my watches, I was wearing my um, uh, FP Jorn uh, uh, Chronomet Resonance uh, the other day. Really enjoyed it. Just felt great. You know, whipped up the old sleeve and looked at it. And the problem that I I sort of had with wearing that watch is that the price went up so much. I was looking the other day, and there was one for a half a million dollars. I said, I can't, you know, I thought, well, what the heck? You know, who's going to know? <laughs> they got, as long as they don't know me. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, Rancher's uh, point to Adam about... Um, lacquer and uh, enamel. Um, one of the reasons we used lacquer was that we had the same uh, dial maker that um, Philippe Dufour had for his Simplicity 37. And I really liked the looks of that dial and I thought it was uh, enamel, but it is, no, it's not. And what he said, he really liked lacquer over enamel because it was thinner and lighter. Uh, I have one enamel watch and it's really nice, uh, but it is thick. And the other thing with enamel, uh, if you're, you know, and the, <laughs> if you're, you're like the little reed group or, or watchmakers now, um, boy, they can break a lot of those things. And, and I don't mean once you have it and you drop it, but rather if you have an enamel, uh, uh, dial, you know, I think after they come out of the kiln or the oven or whatever they put them in, a lot of them are cracked. And so you got, you know, maybe uh, one out of five is one you can use. And so they tend to be a little more expensive, but I like the looks of them. And, uh, but I, I like a good lacquer on there. That's the difference between a good lacquer and some, you know, cheap spray paint. Um, Sector dial, uh, a junior, uh, paddock gold or a royal oak 37 millimeter steel. My favorite uh dial design is a, a Creighton Anywhere Meters de Azur. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, Adam, those uh, I'm glad you mentioned Creighton because that is. If it's who I think it is, it's what I can't afford, but I like. Uh, same thing with Vassaron Constantin's uh, Meters to Art. I, uh, they have one that I just really like with Vasto da Gama or somebody like that. I, really a cool dial. Hello, Mr. Valju. Uh, <laughs> the blue... Uh, Bel Canto, I think, is a great of the four colors now. You know, that's another thing, too. The way they did the color, the way the whole thing was rolled out, I think, is really amazing on that Bel Canto. The Brigade tradition would be the only skeletonized piece for me if I didn't have a, yeah, a big Sal. I am the same way. I love that watch. Basically, the thing I like about the um, Breguet tradition is it looks like something that Abraham Breguet made in his workshop. Even even the rotor on the on the ones that have a rotor. I'm with you though. It's sort of I just it's like putting acrylic on a Van Gogh. It's something not right about it. Uh, but boy, do I like those those watches a lot. The you know there's this kid in uh, France, uh, Cyril something or other. He makes them like that, except he makes them from you know, the whole everything in it, 
And of course, he wouldn't deign to have uh, a silicon hairspring. Uh, there are some, especially the the more craftsmen, like the very the silicon hairspring is very practical, you know. But so's a smartwatch, and so's a quartz watch. They're very practical watches, you know. And it's that if they're taking if they're taking the impracticality out of uh, out of uh, the watches we collect, yeah, I don't want to have anything to do with them. Ah, oh, skeleton dials are like people with no clothes. <laughs> hey, Ivan, uh, your budget's a primary concern. After that, the watch. Yeah, budget can be a concern, except we don't have any sense, Ivan. At least I don't. <laughs> you got, well, what budget? No, if, if if I see a watch I really want, I mean, uh, within and again within certain levels, I'll sell watches. I'll do all kinds of things to get enough to get it. But you're right, you know, you can't. Uh, there's so many watches I'd love to have that the that the budget doesn't work with it. Um, favorite dial is uh, Rex Hep Rexepi. Uh, just won the Grand Prix. Tried to get on their list, and they said all sold out. Uh, you didn't make the cut. Well, Tim, uh, you got to jump quicker. <laughs> you gotta get... I met him uh, a few years ago. Uh, in fact, he was it was the first time that he had he had uh, shown his watches at the um, Watch Time Show in New York, and I had an interview with him. As a matter of fact, it's on one of the videos, and um, the guy is just a just a super nice guy. Loves watchmaking, everything about it. So Tim, <laughs> see if you can get on a waiting list. Um, hi, hater. How you doing? I hope CW showed uh, the other brands that you can make a splash with originally and and hard work. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they have. Hey, Brian. How you doing? Hey, Kaz. Jose. Uh, how do you like, uh, this is um, Rod Zia. How do you like Saproneva? There are so many Saproneva watches I like. I like are they the one that they have this great moon watch? But they had one, I think it's called Blood Moon. It's just fascinating watch. Yeah, they've got some amazing ones. Hi, Big Wrist. <laughs> How are things in Las Vegas? If you wait for maintenance, uh, mainstream media or watch media uh, about a watch, it's already too late. I think you're right. I think that's that's really true. That's why you try to get ahead of the thing. Hi, Vladimir. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hey, Stephen, have, have a, you're having a Timex Saturday. God, when I was younger, that's what I used to buy. I'd buy a Timex. This is before quartz. I'd go out and buy a Timex. That thing was a great watch. Then it would break, and I'd throw it out and get another one. Love those Timexes. You know, some have said the reason that Rolex is named Rolex was that at the time, Timex was the, you know, very popular watch. And so they thought, well, if we call ours something X, it'll it'll work out, too. Apparently, that's why it's so popular. Um, recently picked up a lovely Eberhard tank. It's solid 18 karat onyx. Woo, boy, it sounds good. Uh, ultra uh, slim Frederick Piguet. Uh, caliber 21. Wow, Thomas, that sounds like a see that's that is a is a kind of watch buying that I like is that you really find out about a watch, you know something about it, you get it at a great price, which is even better than one that costs you know 10, 20 times as much and you wouldn't wear. <laughs> My father owned a gold-plated digital watch uh, with red diodes. 
back in the 70s. That was cool. I have a Timex Snoopy, Mr. Valju. Of course you do. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? My Snoopy watch, I have a, a, my stepson got me a Snoopy watch and I have it. It's, 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 I think I have to replace the battery. The only problem with the quartz watch. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let me see how we do it on time. Oh, we got a little time left. What are some other things? Uh, you guys have some great stuff, by the way. I, I just, um, you really great comments today. I, th this will be a, a document of the this, this smart group that happened to show up today. And I think as Lee kept pointing out, Lee is finding out what's beyond the borders of a certain state. <laughs> that will remain unnamed. <laughs> and there's stuff out there from Brazil, from India, from China. <laughs> Above the clouds, 87. Anyone know about um, Seiko Belmatic? I don't. No, I don't. I have a Seiko 5, and that's it. Love my Seiko 5. I don't wear it except, you know, if, if I have some yard work or something, but the Seiko 5, that's one of those ones that, I don't know, 97 bucks. It was worth it. <laughs> Still is worth it. I got it. My that, that thing keeps great time. Well, I do a, a collection reviews in the future, Gilberto. I used to do those, but I quit doing them for two reasons. One, they're just people just weren't interested in them. That was, I mean, except the person who had their collection reviewed, they liked that. The other reason uh, was was that um, I started the Vest Pocket uh, series, and so it's sort of like the the review series was substituted with the Vest Pocket series, which people seemed to like because they could only have to put up with me for five minutes and it was over. Hi, Dark Star. I like the vintage 60s Seikos. Okay. Hey, Hater. Has anyone seen the watches of Marshall Hulsman, candidate for? Oh, I haven't. I haven't. Oh, that's another thing. Um, Hater, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, if I have a link to AHCI, uh, it's ahci.ch. The reason I have that link is that I think probably for the same reason that Hater does is that these guys are are really the best watchmakers in the world as individuals. Uh, I don't mean that Patek Philippe or Audemars Piguet or Vacheron Constantin or Al Langa or Langenheim make less than great watches. They do. But the concentrated talent on AHCI is just, and also that's a good place to discover, you know, some hidden gems. Uh, you can find a lot there. Trouble is, these guys are pretty wise <laughs> to the to the market, and their watches are really expensive. Some guys, I think, sort of price themselves out of a, except a very small market. I mean, it's almost everything has to be. Um, bespoke and they'll make one watch for the person and it'll cost them a whole lot of money. I think this is what's become of, of um, and it's exactly what he wants to do, of Daniel Roth. Daniel Roth had his company that was, I think, a Singapore company really was sort of the supporting thing behind um, Daniel Roth watches. And then they sort of went broke and then they sold it to uh, Bulgari and that ended badly, and then they went and did some other things. Um, okay, all right, uh, Thomas. I, I got time for a couple, two last ones, and we, then my time is up. I've been the bell has rung, so to speak. I think that Armin Strom uh, 
will be a great value uh, proposition someday. They don't seem to hold their value well, but make some amazing stuff. They hold their value, Thomas. Now, Thomas, repeat after me. Their price may be down, but their value really doesn't change. There's that, there's that stupid mindset that was planted by idiots. No offense to the idiots. But if people buy a watch like they're buying stock and they hope it'll go up or stay, you know, where it is, if the value is only in the in the dollar or euro or one amount or whatever frequent uh, currency is used, your value is stable. But if you want to buy a watch that you can get back what you paid for it, you can get a Rolex or a Patek Philippe. They have good not value retention. They have good money retention. Uh, but you're right. A, a watch that doesn't hold its price is a very valuable thing for collectors. This is how I got my Parmigianis and my um, H. Moser before H. Moser went whoop, way up. Uh, excellent watches without the same price retention. Okay, things that are ignored by most also interesting. I have a Beaumont Mercier, Clinton Balmatic, COSC with the blue dial. Uh, got You know, these things are, yeah, the thing about Beaumont Mercier, they have one that I want with a uh, caliber 736 by Jacquet, a Jacquet 736. But they've always they, they've had they all, they've always had really beautiful looking watches I think uh, Bowman Mercier but I've never really wanted one mainly because of the movement thing but that doesn't that doesn't mean anything because I've got I've got my <laughs> this has got an ETA uh, at the base of it but it's got something good on top sorry guys I I went over I I didn't mean to. Thank you all for your wonderful contributions today. And uh, everyone, uh, later this afternoon, we'll be having another discussion on picking winners. Take care.